Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Critters, where I live stream every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, unless otherwise notified. Um, sometimes when we live stream with guests, we will start the live stream at 9 for a full hour of content. So for those of you that may be new, my name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We're an international educational center where we teach people all over the world how to empower animals and the people that care for them. And we do that through our live streaming services that you can find out more about on our website, theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. <clears throat> so I study and apply behavior analysis to an array of species of animals. Um, I also do that with positive reinforcement, which is the topic of last week and this week's Coffee with the Critters two-part episode. If you need to reach me, you can reach me at Laura, L-A-R-A, at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Um, I always respond to emails. I try to get to those first thing in the morning and last thing at night. Um, so a couple of things... Um, to go through before we get started. Um, I've been up since 4.30 this morning working on this to bring you content. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on an episode or the topic or a recap or uh, training videos um, of, with animals, behavior, and enrichment, be sure to join our email newsletter list. You can do that on our website or right here on our Facebook page. You can also find on our Facebook page and our website any events we have coming up. Um, and we are going to have several. So you're going to want to make sure to pay close attention to those events. Uh, we will post those events in our email newsletter as well. Last thing before we get started, um, those of you that are signed up for our next in-person workshop, which will be happening at the Animal Behavior Center on May 6th and 7th, um, you're going to be hearing from me this week. Um, this workshop is sold out. It's sold out within 12 hours of being open to the public. Um, so if you are an attendee of that workshop and we have a waiting list to get into that workshop, um, pay attention to your email because you are going to hear from me this, this week. Hello, April and Nicole and Iris, Lena, Lynn, Tamara, Adrian, Tim, and Ray. The list keeps going on. Thank you for joining me on this Sunday morning. Hopefully you guys are relaxing in the comfort of your own home. Um, having coffee this morning, that will not be happening with me for me today. I've got a full day ahead of me, and it involves a red-shouldered hawk that we are training in our level two membership, a fearful red-shouldered hawk that we need to train to fly to the glove, uh, crate train, scale train, and be comfortable sitting on the glove walking around in public. We are training that red-shouldered hawk as an ambassador animal for Nature's Nursery Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. Um, okay, so did you guys watch last week's episode of Coffee with the Critters? Um, I've received many requests to do a live stream on basic understanding of positive reinforcement. Um, this week, we're going to recap just a little bit. I'm going to give you some diff different examples, especially with humans. Um, a lot of examples with animals. We're going to touch on uh, theories. We're going to touch on topics of um, why people think positive reinforcement doesn't, does not work. I am here to tell you it does. Um, and if it doesn't work, then you'll find out why in this episode. And stay tuned for next week because I've got an idea. All right, so just to recap a little bit on what we discussed last week, positive reinforcement. Um, reinforcement in, is anything that happens after a behavior that, ca that causes the future rate of that behavior to either maintain or increase. And it's called positive 
because something is added that is extremely important. Um, we'll start with some theories that I looked up, um, the operant conditioning theory, which I'm heavily involved in. Um, this theory is developed by B.F. Skinner, explains how positive reinforcement strengthens a behavior by adding a desirable consequence. According to this theory, behaviors that are reinforced are more likely to be repeated in the future. And that is true. I also found one on social learning theory. This theory uh, puts forth that uh, people and animals learn through observation, imitation, and reinforcement. It suggests that individuals are more likely to imitate behaviors that are reinforced with positive outcomes. Uh, what are positive outcomes? I'm a stickler for details because those details help break down observable and measurable events. Um, I was going to talk about a podcast, but I'm going to go, I'm going to keep going forward because we've got a full episode today. Good morning, everybody. Um, social learning, I oh, already said that. Um, so last week we gave some examples of positive reinforcement with an array of different animals. I've got some more coming up with animals, but those that follow the work that I do and have been here to the animal, there's snow, been here to the Animal Behavior Center, to our workshops or our events, I like to, um, snow trying to play with you guy, um, I like to give human examples to help, it helps us understand so we can better understand the animals that we're working with. Uh, so one of the first ones I have, um, some different personal examples, and I came up with this one, um, teaching a child to ride a bike. Um, when you think almost every single one of us can remember when we learned how to ride a bike. I remember we lived in Florida, and my dad was out front working with me, teaching me how to ride a bike. We want to learn how to ride a bike, for those of us that do want to learn, because we see other people doing it. We're curious in how that happens with something with two rotating wheels, and we start learning about gravity. <laughs> um, but we also do it for, once we accomplish this, it empowers us. All right. Do you remember those feelings of being excited and that you accomplish this task? Keep in mind all of these things with training animals. You're empowered. And when you ride a bike successfully for the first time, what did you do? You're excited. You turn around to the person that is the teacher, you as the learner, and the teacher gives you um, attention. And that attention from our parent is a strong reinforcer for several of us. Um, attention is a valued reinforcer. It's the primary reason why social media, everybody's on social media because you get the attention that you want. There's also immediacy. Um, Attention comes immediately through other people posting. Um, some other examples. Attention is a huge reinforcer for a lot of people and social animals. Um, it's very evident and attention, misuse of attention is the number one reason why, why undesired behaviors are reinforced. Um, so... When some other examples as positive reinforcers as a child, um, I was trying to think of some that I got. If we got great grades on our grade card, a lot of times us in my household as a child, we would get candy bars, something like that. Over time, reinforcers change candy bars didn't work for me anymore. <laughs> I needed more. Um, so those of you that read my blog and listen to our podcasts, the Animal Behavior Hour, um, are very familiar with Snot Nose Johnny. 
Uh, we just had a live stream in level one this past week. And I didn't realize how many times I talk about snot nose Johnny. Um, so I give examples. I'm always using snot nose Johnny as um, an example of reinforcing undesired behavior. Um, the parent is standing in line at the checkout counter and what's sitting right there, all that candy. Do you think that's a, by mistake? No, it's not. Um, it's a very cruel joke to human society raising children <laughs> because the kids stand there, see the candy and they tap on mom or dad or whoever. I want this candy bar. I want this candy bar. And mom is busy putting groceries on the conveyor belt and that tapping on mom doesn't work anymore. So the tapping becomes harder. And if that turns and gets the parents attention, then we just unknowingly reinforce instead of the light polite tap, we just reinforce the harder tap. Likely the next time the child will go to the harder tap because it worked. So is it positively reinforcing to the mom or the parent? No, but it is to the child and it worked. So the likely behavior of the tapping harder will maintain or increase the next time. Um, and I always say, if you wanna see behavior explode all around you, go to the grocery store. Because it happens almost every single time. I'm like, whoop, you're unknowingly reinforcing that extremely undesired behavior. And then you see it become a tug of war between the parent and the child. Um, I'm sure a lot of us have seen this. Um, this is why I use this in my blog posts all the time. So I'm going to make myself a note because the next one I want to talk about is manipulation in the workforce. I'm going to circle this because I read a whole book on using positive reinforcement in the workforce. And this is the, and it's so misused. It's so misused. And I remember Dr. Jason Crean one time telling me, Laura, you not, you are not a boss. You are a leader. There is a clear difference. And I'm going to talk about this coming up um, here within the next couple minutes, but manipulation within the workforce, if people only understood how positive reinforcement works, they, at, at, at a deeper understanding, they would use it because it does work and because it's more humane and because it's a lot easier. Um, when using mon manipulation, coercion, aversives, um, it may work and the reinforcer for it working is usually you get fast results but those results don't maintain. People will give you behavior to escape, avoid a consequence at the current time. Uh, but what it teaches the people to do is to avoid you in the future and to um, get to that positive reinforcer in a different way. And it actually doesn't reinforce the behavior that you're wanting it to. So anybody feel free to Speak up. Debbie, you said I would love to read that book. I think I talk about it a lot in level two, but I've got it circled. I'm going to bring it up. Um, it's on my phone, which I have on Do Not Disturb in the other room. Here's another example of manipulation within the workforce. Um, this is why I'm bound and determined to work for myself because I've been involved in that manipulation and misuse of power in the workforce. And when I look around me from others, it's still there. And if we only knew better, we could do so much better and businesses would thrive, succeed. Um, I don't want to forget to talk about what a worker just said to me uh, within the past year. Um, but I receive these examples from workers and volunteers at my center all the time. Let me give you an example of where I used to work. Um, I was out working and my boss, 
called me at the time and he said, Laura, what are you doing? And I said, I'm working. And he said, can you come into the office? I need to talk to you. So I said, sure. I dropped what I was doing and what I was doing was extremely important to me and extremely important to the business. I'm a very hard worker. I love to work. My father instilled that in me. Um, work is a part of who I am in my life. That's why I do what I do. Uh, my dad raised me to be an entrepreneur and work for myself. And dad, I hope you're still very proud of me. Um, so I ended up going into the office and I walked in and I was like, what's going on? What can I help you with? And he said, because I have a background in graphic design, he said, do you know how to get this off of a file? And I said, yeah, is this what you called me in for? And he said, yeah, I need you to do this now. But he was, he was telling me very authoritative and very coercive. And I said, do you know what I was working on was extremely important to my work and the work of this company? He said, I don't care, do it or else. And I just said, okay. So I took that file from him. I walked over to my office and sat down and stuck it in the computer and sat there and checked my emails instead of look, work, working on the file. And I was so angry at how disrespected I was, I, he was to me. So I didn't even look at the file. <laughs> you guys thinking about hiring me might want to keep this in mind. <laughs> didn't even look at the file checked my emails for a half an hour and continued to work on my work, went back in and sat it on his desk and said, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't get it open. He was like, oh, now what are we going to do? So if he would have approached me differently with respect, and even if I wasn't getting paid for, if he would have said, Laura, we're in a bind. I need your help. Can you please help me? I would have said, absolutely, grab that file, went and I would have worked without even getting paid to help him. The reinforcer was to help him, to help whatever project he was working on. And I guess for that attention from a peer, um, thank you, Tim, from a peer, but that is how um, unknowingly misusing um, how we interact with people in the workforce. Um, so when I was reading this book, it was a fabulous book and it came up with so many examples and I was constantly making notes of how it pertained to the work we do with animals. Um, so I had a worker that works for another organization come to me and say, and we had this all the time at the center we continue to have it all the time at the center. People enjoy volunteering and working at our center, not because I use positive reinforcement as a way to bribe people. I flat out tell them, this is why we do what we do. We get comments all the time about people saying, they enjoy being at the center. We used to have schools and we're getting ready to, again, have schools come into the center and the teacher would say, this is such a positive experience to work here because of your use of positive reinforcement. We use attention a lot as a reinforcer. We have a lot of fun at the Animal Behavior Center. I'm a very sarcastic person, but I'm careful with that sarcasm uh, based on the individual I'm using it with, intending to using it with, thinking about using it with, because that may not be a positive reinforcer of theirs. But we have a lot of fun. And when we have a lot of fun, I see people working and volunteering extra hours. Um, I saw it yesterday and I was like, why are you here? You've been on vacation. Go home and be with your animals. And they're like, they're in there making... Um, enrichment for the hyacinths because we're very low on volunteers right now for multiple different reasons. And we have 18 animals in our center. And before I take in an animal, I make sure that I can enrich it through training. 
um, interaction um, foraging. Um, so this worker was telling me, I love it when I can come over here and work. I'm still trying to get jobs done, but you, you appreciate the work that I do. <clears throat> um, we laugh, we joke while we're working. Um, I, I don't sit there and hover over people and make sure they're doing what they work, what they need to be doing. Um, I see it. I see it. Uh, people want to work extra. So some different examples of positive reinforcement in professional life could include providing recognition. That's a huge one. Attention is a big reinforcer. Um, reinforcers to employees for different goals. Paychecks are a positive reinforcer. Um, holiday, holiday bonuses are a positive reinforcer. Um, Oh, I do this intentionally. I constantly change different species of animals that are coming in to, that's right, Rachel, you were the one I was talking about. Um, Cause Rachel said yesterday, she just got back from vacation and she's volunteering her time and she's feeding the animals. And then she's in there making the highest sense toys. And I was like, Rachel, go home and be with your animals. You haven't even seen them yet, but no, she stayed for two and a half hours. So you bet your ass that I'm going to positively reinforce the hell out of that behavior. Um, but I bring in a variety of animals to the center for training because that's a positive reinforcer for the employees and the volunteers at the center. They get this opportunity to interact and engage um, with this unique species of animal that they wouldn't have the opportunity. And it causes them to pay attention, learn, and then I can teach them about behavior, behavior modification, why this could be the animal's potential aversive, why we need to pay attention to the behavior of the animal so we can identify reinforcers. Um, Okay, I just talked about that. Um, benefits, and I want to hear from you guys on this. And I'm going to go back and read all the comments afterwards. And I, I would love for you to continue commenting, and you'll see why at the end. Um, benefits of positive reinforcement. I want to hear what you guys think they are. I know what some of them are, and I don't even have to look at my paper, but I have to to stay on track because. Ray mentioned last week, you stayed on track. Um, that was a reinforcer of mine, positive reinforcer. Um, so shout out and tell me some of the different positive reinforcers you see with people, yourself, animals, because it's not just food. Um, I see it increases motivation and productivity. Um it can motivate animals and ourselves to repeat desirable behaviors and increase their productivity. What is desirable behaviors? It's often, well, it is determined by the individual, not by one of us that want to uh, see the behavior maintain or increase. Um, so some of you guys are saying, um, thanks, Lena. builds desire. Janae says enthusiasm. I have written down, it builds confidence and empowers the animal. And when I was thinking about this, I was like Milo on the leash. There was some training that went into that. Didn't want him pulling on the leash. What do I want him to do? I want him walking beside me at a, my desirable pace. Um, so Sylvia says it creates a positive relationship. Absolutely. And that is what the next topic I'm going to talk about. Um, here's me interacting, training an animal that I was deathly afraid of. Um, this is Micaiah, the pigtailed macaque. It was, I was asked to train him. And what afraid means is I don't have enough information about this animal. I have negative ex past experiences with him. Um, it, strengthens that relationship and 
now Micaiah and I have a very strong trust and respect for each other through that training. Um, positive reinforcement can be a powerful tool for learning new skills. And when you train an animal at a young age through positive reinforcement, you will see the effects, the desirable effects that the animal does throughout its lifetime. That does not mean we can't train an old bird, dog, pig, giraffe new tricks, because you can. I do it all the time. Um, it's mentally and physically stimulating. It's humane. Sylvia says creates clear communication, which empowers the animal. Absolutely. Um, it builds trust. That is this photo. Um, studies show that animals learn faster from earning reinforcement for what to do versus what not to do. I have another photo down here that I say, this is one I never hear anybody say, because I think we're so focused on the animal, which we should be. But if we're training an animal, we're a team. It's the two of us. It's not just you. You're training me too. I'm fine with that. And it does happen. When you're training, the animal's training you, you're training the animal. Um, but I wanted to say it's easier. <laughs> it's a lot easier. Um, I know because I used to train using force coercion and aversives because I didn't know any better. And I remember walking my dog as it was pulling on the leash thinking, I need to look into this positive reinforcement stuff, see what it's all about. That was 20 years ago. And I did. And that is why I do what I do. It's a lot easier. I am not going to chase a flying animal around a 10,000 square foot center. Um, I'm not going to get on a ladder to get it out of the rafters. I'm just going to simply call it to me. And that's how we get a lot of our animals out. Say I'm have, I have a busy day every day, but I need to make sure all 18 animals have are in and out of their enclosure, getting fresh air, sunshine, foraging, training. That's a lot. That is a lot. So sometimes these animals, once in a while, these animals only have five minutes to get out. But I'm like training through run to me as fast as you can, fly to me as fast as you can. And a lot of times I've done, I've done it so well that when an animal's out, there's a certain animal I'm thinking of at the Animal Behavior Center. When I see them, they're like, they all want to be with me. And I was like, Oop, I got a project I got to work on. So you'll see me run through the center as fast as I can to run faster than the animals coming after me because what they want to do is just be on me, uh, be near me because I've paired myself with their positive reinforcers and reinforcers change over time. Um, and soon you'll see this fearful animal just empowered to the ultimate and its reinforcers change to the point that you, the opportunity to be on you, near you, interacting with you, vocalizing with you is one of the top most valuable reinforcers. That is one of the top three reasons why I do what I do. And it almost brings me to tears because it's so, it's such a beautiful thing. Um, where was I? Build trust. Okay. Oh, it's easier. Um, it reduces stress both mentally and physically. Lena, I know you're saying a lot in detail and I really want to read what you're saying. So I'm going to do that after the live stream and continue interacting with you. Um, did I say it reduces stress both mentally and physically? Okay, let's get into some common misconceptions about positive reinforcement. And if anybody on here says positive reinforcement doesn't work, I would love to hear from you challenge my brain because a challenge to me is a positive reinforcer to dig deeper and know how to do better. Positive reinforcement in my 18 years of experience does work. And if it's not working, let me know. And if you're cool for a debate, I'm ready to get into one. <clears throat> um, so 
uh, some reasons why it doesn't work. Oh, Jen says that it's a permissive misconception. Um, bribery is a big one. When I was told people don't, there's people out there that protest positive reinforcement and applied behavior analysis. I remember the late Dr. Patricia Anderson told me that. And I said, what are you talking about? And she goes, oh, there's a, there's people out there that heavily defy it. And, and I'm like, why? I just didn't understand. I was like, how? I mean, if you know how you're doing it, um, if you understand it, you clearly see that it works. So I tried to look up some um, common misconce misconceptions of why it doesn't work, that it's bribery, while both involve providing a reinforcer for behavior, positive re reinforcement is used to increase the likelihood of desirable behaviors being repeated, while bribery is used to, oh, is used to influence behavior in a manipulative or unethical way. So this caused me to look into bribery. Um, and I wrote, the difference with positive reinforcement results in the animal wanting to do the behavior. Bribery results in the animal doing the behavior to escape the consequence. Um, and when I was looking up bribery, um, I saw a lot of it and how a lot of it is illegal and unethical to use in the human field. Um, bribery does not strengthen the relationship. You guys list what you, what you have heard, but I'm here to tell you, I would never use bribery with the animals that I work with. Um, because I do have a photo, even though we've got mini me here, I don't want an, I don't want to work with an angry anything because if I'm more, if I'm paired with that, um, it's setting me up for failure, it's setting that animal up for failure, and it's setting me up to get hurt. So even this chick might be tiny right, right now, it's going to be bigger. I want the best relationship with this animal for when this animal is, when I'm working with an animal three times the size of me. I am not going to be working with it with bribery. Bribery is not paired with the, with the positive. It doesn't build trust. And it can be extremely dangerous. So um, if I'm working with this animal, mm -mm, I don't want to be using bribery. Um, I want to be using positive reinforcement. Another one I looked up that positive reinforcement is only for working with children. I've never heard that one. Um, but it's obviously a popular one. And it's only used for working with people. Um, remember when B.F. Skinner was doing all these testing, all his theories on positive reinforcement, he was using rats, pigeons. OK, um, when we truly understand positive reinforcement, we know the science behind the behavior and then it works on every single living thing. Um, Jen says misconception that positive reinforcement takes too long. Um, I would say, does it take long? I, I would say, Jen, can it take long? Because yes, it can. But the alternative, I mean, okay, so using aversives doesn't take long because when, I, when somebody uses aversives to control behavior, what I see is a lot of negative reinforcement. The animal gives you the behavior to escape, avoid the consequence, and I really suck at trying to stay on time because um, I really want to get through this. Um, when I see using aversives to control behavior means you're constantly going to have to use, you're constantly going to have to spank, threaten, um, and your, the behavior you get is not reliable. Um, I always train for accidents and I need all animals going to a station when I say station. Um, I also wanted to point out it's the individual that identifies the reinforcer. We can use it to get desired behavior without force, bribery, coercion, and aversives. Um, how to implement positive reinforcement effectively. 
identify the behaviors to reinforce, um, identify the reinforcers, keep a list of reinforcers because because they're going to they're going to change. Um, choose appropriate reinforcers. Um, what your reinforcers can change in a matter of a second. When the environment changes, your reinforcers can change. Uh, let's see. Deliver reinforcement consistently and immediately. Those. There, there's two of the four main factors of reinforcer effectiveness. All right. Immediacy is one. Um, I, I train animals to also still give desired behaviors with distant reinforcers. Um, monitor and adjust reinforcement as necessary. They change over time. Okay, so um, in conclusion, positive reinforcement does work. It works on every single person. Um, reinforcers change from person to person, from animal to animal. Each individual needs to be treated as such. I don't want to skip that. I've got a bunch of stuff to read, but I want to skip over it. Um, it's important to understand its theories, example benefits, and misconceptions in order to implement effectively. And this is what I want to end with. In areas where alternatives need to be used, other than positive reinforcement, um, such as other quad quadrants, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, negative punishment. Make sure you understand what you are doing. You understand the definition of these other three quadrants. And if you have to use other methods, make sure you are pairing them with positive reinforcement, reinforcement with the intentions of fading out the use of, other, of others. Understand what you are doing and reach out for help from professionals that understand to help set you up for success. Whether that's reaching out to me, I see several people on here um, that I could recommend re reaching out for as well. And so I wanted to say, I would like to hear from you um, a list of varying positive reinforcement reinforcers that you have observed with the children in the household, with the spouse in the household, with the dogs in the household, with parrots in the household, pigs, the animals that you work with at educational um, centers, all the different species and what reinforcers. If you do not believe positive reinforcement works, let me know. And if you're up for debate, which I'm always up for debate, um, let's do it. Um, if you like this information, please share it. I have dedicated the last two episodes to this public live stream to help you, to help others, whether I'm helping you, somebody else is helping you. I don't care because when we know better, we do better. Um, and let us know how we can help you. So if you've liked this, take a look at our other services we op offer, our workshops. You can come train side by side with me and, and, and debate with me while we're training a wide variety of species of animals. Um, <clears throat> we also have our webinars. Uh, we have our memberships, which you can find on our website and our podcasts, which are extremely popular. We have a new service getting ready to launch as soon as I can sit down and work on it. Right, Therese? We have our level one and level two membership. Level two right now, we're working on a red-shouldered hawk. We're training a red-shouldered hawk, an alligator, and two giraffes. Um, we also, level one is for people working with companion animals and people who want to listen to our podcast. They're involved in both level one, level two. We have our projects, which are extremely popular. The pop, uh, the pig pro parrot project, the pig project, which people are begging me to get, it's archived and people get in level one, but they want that pig project um, started again. And speaking of pigs and horses, those are two different species of animals I look at when I want to see people using aversives, uh, positive punishers, 
coercion, um, we can do better in those two areas. Um, it's not saying it doesn't work, but it does have its consequences. And I don't want to be working with any of these animals with these consequences. We also have our webinars, which you can find out, you can find on the Animal Behavior Center's Facebook page. We have our website. We have a wide array of recorded webinars, one on understanding behavior, where I go, I dive deeper into what we've just been talking about for the past two weeks. We have other ones that are more specific, such as working with reinforcers, reinforcement and identification. Um, we also have a live streamed webinar getting ready to launch. If you want to join me as I give this presentation, make sure you're on our email newsletter. Um, and with that, I'm gonna say, have a great Sunday, everybody. Um, I have an idea for next week's coffee with the critters and you will find out this week. All right. Thanks for attending and share away. All right. Have a good weekend.